Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square, and welcome to my free class, CSS Basics for Squarespace. In this class, you'll learn how to customize your Squarespace site with code. We'll cover what CSS is and how it works with Squarespace, five things you need in every piece of code, how to install CSS in your Squarespace website, and we'll go over some troubleshooting tips that are good to know when you're just getting started with code. Ready to dig in? Let's do this. Starting from the top, what is CSS and how does it work with Squarespace? CSS is an acronym that stands for Cascading Style Sheet. It's a code language that tells a browser how to display the content on your site. It just changes the look, not the functionality. It's how a browser knows what size font to use and what color that button is supposed to be. In Squarespace, every item on your site gets a code name that helps a browser understand. Okay, this heading one text is blue, but this heading two text is green. This small button is orange, but this big button should be purple. Squarespace writes your CSS code for you based on your site styles menu. Things like font families, color themes, image block spacing, all of those settings from your site styles menu are translated to CSS behind the scenes. And as great as Squarespace is, sometimes that design menu can't make your site as unique as you want it to be. That's where CSS comes in. If you want to have a button change color on a hover, that's CSS. Add a custom font to your site, that's CSS. Move an image on mobile, yep, CSS. It can change just about everything on a Squarespace site, but only how it looks. So you can't break your site playing around with custom code. If you don't like what your code did, remove it and it goes right back to the way it was. Pretty awesome, right? So using one of the practice codes from your guide, let's talk about the five things that every code needs. First up is that code name or selector. You have to tell the browser, this is what I'm going to change. In Squarespace, everything gets a code name, and it also gets a unique ID. There are some fun things you can do using unique IDs and code names, but we don't need to get that complicated just yet. Let's start with the code name. In this example, this code will change the color of the small button and just the small button on our site. So we start the code with SQS block button element small. The next essential here is the curly bracket. This tells the browser, I'm about to give you some code, so get ready. Yep, just a symbol, but an important one. Next up is the property. What about this thing are we going to change? Now there are over 200 properties in CSS. Font family, font size, color, border, padding, margin, it's a big old list. But this is the cool part. You only need to say what you want to change. You don't have to list out every detail about this thing. So in our example here, all we want to change is the background color of this button. So we can say background color. After that is the value. What are we changing it to? You can use a hex color code or any color code or just a web save color name like the word blue in this example. If you wanna learn more about colors, visit insidethesquare.co forward slash colors for some more information. Plenty of fun stuff to explore there. Okay, so we have the code name, the selector here, what we're working on. Then we have the first curly bracket to signal that we're about to throw down some code changes. After that, it's the property, what we're going to change. And then we have the value, what we're changing it to. So that's four. What's the fifth? The final curly bracket. It's the period at the end of our code sentence. If you don't add this, your browser won't know that you're done. So don't forget it. So let's recap here code name or selector, this is what you're changing. Curly bracket to start your code, the property, what you're changing about that thing, the value, what you're changing it to, and then the final last curly bracket to let the browser know that you are done. So now that we have this code, this is one of the practice codes from your guide, how do we install it inside Squarespace? You actually have three options here because Squarespace is so awesome. They make it so easy for us to customize with code. Let's start with the breakdown of each one of these. For changes to your whole site, use the custom CSS file under design then custom CSS. This puts your code with the code Squarespace made for you. It's going to load on every single page of your site. So it's perfect for site-wide things like adding a font or changing all of the small button colors. Next up, we have page header code injection. At the time of recording this, this is just a business and commerce plan option. So if you're on a personal plan, stick with me here, you have another option too. Page header code injection is great for changes to single pages, like hiding the header and footer to make a landing page. The page header on your site 
loads before the content does. So if you only want to change the small button color on one page, put your code here. Another pro tip for you, in your page header, you can have different types of code. So you have to tell the browser this is a cascading style sheet code by labeling it style. Using the exact same code you would use in custom CSS, start it off with a left caret, the word style, and a right caret, then paste your code, and then close it with a left caret, forward slash, the word style, and then a right caret. This way the browser knows, oh, this is CSS, I've got it. Now, if you're on a personal plan and you don't have access to page header code injection, or, and this is very important, if you want to change a single blog post, an individual product, or a project inside of a portfolio, you can use an on-page code block. This block will load with the rest of the content on your site, so it might take a hot second to see the style change, but it's the only way to make individual page changes on individual blog posts, products, projects, or if you're using a personal plan. So let's recap this. How to install CSS. Here in your Squarespace site, navigate to design and then scroll all the way down to custom CSS. The only code here is CSS, so type away, my friend. Make any site-wide changes you want to see. After that, we have page header code injection. Great for a single page change. Navigate to your pages menu and select the gear icon next to the page that you want to add that code to. Scroll on down to advanced. And remember, we can have multiple types of code here. So you need to start your code with the word style paste to the same code you would use in your custom CSS file and finish it with a closing style bracket. When you're all done here, select save and that'll be applied to the individual page. And finally, for individual blog posts, products or projects, or if you're on a personal plan, use an on-page code block. Hop into edit mode of the page you'd like to add this code to and anywhere you see this plus sign, click on that. Again, paste the exact same code you'd use in custom CSS, but start it off with style and end it with forward slash style so the browser knows that's the type of code you'd like to use. I understand it's going to take a few times before you have this memorized, so be sure to save the PDF that I made to go with this class. It outlines all three options and includes step-by-step -step instructions. So finally, I wanna talk about some troubleshooting tips. Learning code is learning a new language, so don't be discouraged if you get stuck when you're just starting out. Let's talk about some common problems here. The first one is important. Seriously, important. We're overriding that file that Squarespace made based on your design menu settings. So sometimes a browser will get confused and it'll wanna pick that code over the one that you created. So how do you make sure it knows to use the new one? After your value, what you're changing the thing to, add the text exclamation point important. Now only use this if you need to. It's kind of like you're yelling at the browser to pay attention to your code. So save that outside voice for when you really need it. Buttons are notorious for ignoring code changes, so you might need it there. But anytime you try to change something with code and nothing happens, try making sure it's important first. Next up, let's talk about code names. You have to use the right name for the right thing. If you're using an older version of Squarespace, like a Brine or Bedford theme on version 7, your code names will be a little different than those used by a Squarespace 7.1 site. Mobile bar menu is what Brine refers to as that little menu icon. In Bedford, it's called mobile nav toggle, and in 7.1, it's called a burger box. You see where I'm going with this? You've got to make sure you're using the right code name for your version and your theme. Now, if you have no idea what you're working with, visit insidethesquare.co forward slash theme to find out. And last but not least, the dreaded syntax error. A syntax error means there's a character that the browser doesn't know what to do with. Make sure your commas are commas, semicolons are semicolons, and you don't have any extra dashes or spaces or dots. If you're copying code out of a PDF, sometimes PDF readers will skip over those characters because it considers that text formatting and not code. So just triple check what you copied if you see a syntax. There are a few more tips I have on troubleshooting. So if you run into any issues, visit insidethesquare.co forward slash code help for more tips and my current support options. Alrighty, did we do it? Did we cover all the things? Let's check. What is CSS and how does it work with Squarespace? CSS is a code language that changes 
the look of a site, but not the functionality. Squarespace is super easy to customize with code because it gives everything a code name that you can work with. The five things you need in every piece of code. Start with the code name, AKA selector, the thing that you want to change, then a curly bracket to open that code, the property or what you want to change about it, then the value you're going to change it to, and finally, close it up with a curly bracket. Yes, you can combine code names and properties and some values and all that jazz, but this is a basics class. So now you know the basics. Now how to install CSS in Squarespace. Site-wide changes go in your CSS file under design, then custom CSS. If you're changing one page, use the page header code injection under the page settings menu in the advanced section. And if you're changing up just one post, product, project, or have a personal plan, use an on-page code block. For both page header and on-page code blocks, don't forget to tell the browser it's a style code by adding those style brackets. And last but not least, troubleshooting. If the browser is ignoring you, make sure your code is important enough by adding an exclamation point followed by the word important right after the value. Make sure you're using the right code name for your version and theme. And if you're getting a syntax error, it means a character's out of place. Check for spaces, dashes, and other misplaced characters in your code. And if you copied it from a PDF, triple check that you didn't skip anything important by accident. And there you have it, friend, CSS basics from inside the square. I hope you learned something awesome with me today. I have a ton of tutorials on my site at insidethesquare.co to help you learn even more about customizing code, so definitely check those out when you're ready. Be sure to download the PDF I made to go with this class so you have those installation instructions on hand and some fun codes to practice with. And if you need any code help, visit insidethesquare.co forward slash code help for some troubleshooting tips. Thanks again for joining me here inside the square. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now.